Hey guys! So today I'm taking a look at Prima's alcohol-based markers. And I have four different sets. I have Brunette, Sapphire, Dolled Up, Light Skin. And these were um, pretty much the sets they had on, uh, on Overstock.com, which is where I got these from. Um, and Prima is a company that makes... Um, Oh, like art and craft supplies, but more focused towards crafting than towards art. Um, and so I couldn't, I couldn't resist their alcohol markers. Um, so they're alcohol based, they're non-toxic permanent ink. They, uh, work on the, supposedly they work on the same things that alcohol markers work on. Say that colors can be blended with their blender marker. I don't, I didn't see a set with a blender marker. I might have just missed it, though, because I also don't have, like, a black marker either. Uh, dual tip allows for a variety of strokes with just one marker. Um, when did these come out? These have a two-year shelf life. That's interesting. And it says zero to 14 years, which is interesting because I know, I know quite a few 12-year-olds who love alcohol markers and are very good with them. So, and I don't think they'd put them in their mouths. These come with three replacement nibs because they have a brush nib supposedly and they're all packaged like this i couldn't find any larger sets and overstock even sent them to me in these plastic bags because you know none of us grew up watching captain planet so none of us learned a thing or two about looting or polluting and whether or not that is the way and um all of my packages say Julie Nutting, and they all have um, illustrations that look like they were done by the same artist. And it looks like either they or Prima kind of cheaped out because the head is repeated here and here, and then the full figure is repeated between light skin and brunette. And it says something about indicator, markers, markering, six pieces, includes three. Ah, ha, 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 ha. They're counting the brush tips for their six pieces. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in kind of a goofy mood, and I've been recording all day because stuff came in, so I have to record and get it processed, that kind of thing. A lot of packaging on these. A lot of um, packaging that's going right in my trash can which is a shame. And I, I will say that right now I haven't done any research on these markers. Um, I'm sort of just doing a video overview, but if you guys are interested in something a little more in depth, you should check out natosoup.blogspot.com um, because I do in-depth reviews over there. Most of my reviews on camera are just like little quick things to sort of introduce people to a concept or to a product or and really long tutorials <laughs> to uh, show people how I do things. But the blog is where it's at. There's seven years worth of content on there and you can find the full review on there. So my nibs, my brush nibs just kind of came flying out and they are like hard little fiber nibs right now and they're small. Like, they look like they should go to my Wacom. They really look like they should go to my Wacom stylus and not to markers. So I'm going to put all of them aside. So this is Sapphire. And it has, a, ooh, they have color families, which are not indicated on the caps. The caps have like a rose. Um, so there's Horizon Green, Aqua, and Holiday Blue. And they are twin-tipped with a brush at one end and a chisel nib at the other. And I will grab a couple of other markers for comparison. We have a Prismacolor and we have a Copic. And I'm taking photos as I go along because <laughs> I know some of you guys are not gonna check out the blog and that's okay. Um, and some of you guys are uh, only read the blog and they aren't gonna see this post. So I have to do what I can to suit both parties. All right, that's Copic. Oh, come on, you. Cap is, Oof. Cap is finicky. Do the Caps post. <gasps> the Caps post! 
What? That's, that's unusual with alcohol markers. Well, I think uh, Prismacolor is post. Yeah, Copics don't though. <laughs> it just yanked it off for me. Thank you. All right. So from top to bottom, we have a Copic sketch. We have a Prima uh, alcohol-based marker, and we have a Prismacolor marker. All of them are alcohol-based. Uh, the Prima packaging does not say anything about whether or not they're refillable. The nibs are replaceable, uh, but I haven't seen ink for sale for them yet, but that doesn't really mean anything. It took a long time for me to be able to find... Um, What's it called? Inks. Spectrum Noir inks in the, or as some people say, Spectrum Noir. Uh, took a while to find those inks in the U.S. because they are a U.K. brand and it just took a minute to get over there. So this is dolled up and it's like lipstick kind of colors, really, or blushy kind of colors. Or just, you know, pinks. And these come in peach red, carmine red, and flesh red. Uh, we have light skin. This is a lot of packaging, guys. I would rather not have so much packaging. Oh, shoot, that's right. All of these sets come with these things and I've been like letting them go all over the place but I'm never gonna change those nibs I'm just I'm just not I know myself unless the nibs are just like really crummy and they just die I'm just never gonna get around to it I change my Copic nib sometimes but I've never changed a um a Shinhan twin touch and those are meant to be changed too I just haven't you know I don't use them on their own enough. Come on. So this packaging is annoying because once they're, it's open, these little nibs are free to roam your studio or your apartment or your house or your craft room. And if, if they just put them in like a little Ziploc bag, that would make life so much easier. All right, in brunette, we have sienna, mahogany, and rose beige, which doesn't look like flattering color, but we'll find out. Let's do the swatch test. Now these also have a color family. These are A91, A87, A85. These are A82, A84, A83. So I guess A would be like your browns. Oh no, they're all A's. Wow, that doesn't make any sense. A01, A03, A06. Why not just have numbers if everything's gonna be A? A49, A44, A50. All right. So, the way I'm going to do this is, um, oh, wow, check it. That looks, what, grody to the max. That does not look good. And look how uh, chunky and unappealing that nib looks. I actually have no idea how long these have sat. So, this is fair skin. Oh, that's... DOA. Huh? Let's try. Okay, so we've got one dead marker, skin white. I guess I'm going to be writing the Prima. Barely beige. Okay, this one works. So I will be writing to Prima. And the brush nib isn't, oh, isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Where's my pen? Got to write this down. Oh, it's a blue. I don't want blue. I need a black pen. A83. I mean, considering how I haven't seen these markers anywhere but overstock, they could they could just be like two years old already. Oop, oop, oop. So that's A84 fruit pink. And my skin white is dry, so I need to remember to write to them. All right, now we're in dolled up. As an artist, I'm really not a fan of the... Well, okay, as a human, I'm not a fan of the gendered pa uh, marketing. But, you know. And as an artist, I'm not really a fan 
of the color family names not being indicative necessarily of the colors inside but the names on the markers are okay they're no worse than what copic does with like flesh red for example well flesh comes in a variety of skin tones a06 all right last one oh it's a nice nice dark red Oop. and i'm testing both sides the brush isn't as bad as i thought it was you know what i bet i could reconstitute that barely no wait skin pink with a little bit of rubbing alcohol a03 because i mean it's dead anyway and there is sienna this is the brunette set i need to write that down it's another color family i'm not not into the name for Okay, A91. Do any of you crafters, like, maybe I'm just, like, being mm, persnickety about it because I have a different different background. Do any of your, you crafters dislike or like, do you have any strong opinions about these kind of color names? Like, fair skin, dolled up, brunette, or are they okay? Because dolled up does look like makeup, but, um, you know, just call it makeup. A85. I don't know, dolled up is a little, it's a little much, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. That's why I'm asking y'all for y'alls. All right, A87, A87. So far, the colors are all right. They're, um, they're fairly saturated, other than, like, the dead marker I got. This is sapphire, and none of these are sapphire colors. I would have called this under the sea, because sapphire is more like an, an ultramarine kind of blue. But sapphire isn't even necessarily a blue stone all the time. It really depends on the chemicals involved. See? See the problem? You're assuming uh, everyone has the same definition of everything. That's not the case. Caps are a little hard to get on and off. Like, this is a green, and it is horizon green. Like, you know, kelp or seaweed. A44. Aqua. A49. And holiday blue. Okay. All right, so the caps are not necessarily indicative of the colors you're getting. Not a perfect match. Depends on how much you care about that. Like, for example, mahogany looks almost like a lipstick pink in person, but it is actually a decent brown, and these are triads for the most part. Sapphires are actually not, the sapphire markers are not a triad, so um, you could probably been blend in between the three, but it's not going to be the same smooth blend you're going to get with, like, dolled up or brunette. Um, so... I'm going to try and reconstitute my skin white. And uh, I'll see you guys when I have a field test. Hey guys. So I'm going to try and revive my Prima skin white marker, which was DOA. Now I've got a pair of Copic tweezers and I've got my marker. And I need some rubbing alcohol. Ha, here it is. And I'm on WikiHow. <laughs> um, and they suggest you soak the marker tips in rubbing alcohol just enough to submerge your tips. So I'm going to remove my marker tips using my Copic tweezers. 
might even replace this tip. And I am going to recap my marker just in case there's something in there to salvage. And this is 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Wish I had like a bottle cap. And it says, it, not seeing it. Let the markers dry with the caps on. After you're soaking your markers for a few minutes, see a small amount of ink. Yeah, I'm noticing that. So they need to be tip side up in a glass or a mug and let them rest for 24 to 48 hours. Oh, move the markers from, wait, I'm not understanding. Do I submerge the marker or the tip? I thought I removed the tip. Oh, I need to submerge the marker, I guess, because that way it'll get in. So I'm going to need more alcohol. And then I gotta let the marker dry. This can't do too much harm. I need a lot more rubbing alcohol. <laughs> we learn together. Hopefully. Because, like, I figure if this doesn't work, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world because. I am, oh, now you don't want to go in. Oh, because you've absorbed water? Or alcohol, stupid me. Um, I figure I'm probably going to be contacting Prima about a dead-on arrival marker anyway. So even just to let them know that some of their marker sets have the problematic markers, broken markers. So, um, actually... Out of curiosity, let's see. Kind of. It's reconstituted the ink in the nib, which is promising. So I need to find a bowl, a, preferably a small one or some other small container, because I don't want to waste a bunch of ink. I mean, a bunch of alcohol doing this. I really just want to... And then I got to do it tip side up to rest. But this is a double ended marker. All right, I'm going to go find a bowl. So this is not a bowl. This is actually one of my Copic uh, drawers that I store. Well, it's not Copic brand, but I store my Copic markers in here. This doesn't seem... Well, okay. Gonna have to order some more rubbing alcohol off of Amazon. Oh, the marker floats. Great. I'm gonna need to, to weight it down. And it needs to be like this for a few minutes. So... Yeah, I'll let it do that, and I'll check back in with you guys. Hey, guys. So it's been about five minutes, and uh, I put this little spritzer of water on top of my marker to um, submerge it. Whoa. And I just want to see if this has helped any. Another method involves injecting, um, rubbing alcohol. Ooh, that's like even lighter. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It looks like it did something, even if it's not perfect. So, uh, I'm going to wipe this off. Just with like a paper towel and it says to store it uh up well tip side up but we've got two tips so we've got a little bit of a conundrum
But yeah, it does seem to have at least brought back the chisel nib. Not so much the brush nib. But hey, you know what? They sent us a whole bunch of replacement nibs. So let me dig one of those up and try switching out the nib. And I'm gonna put that right back in the water because I don't want to lose what I've gained. And rubbing alcohol does tend to dry really quickly. Oh, that's weird and sad. I can't find any, any of those nibs. I don't know what's wrong with me. All right, well, I'm gonna go look for the nibs and I'll come back to you guys when I have found them. They were under my paper the whole time. I'm a dumb dumb. All right, so I'm gonna wipe you off. Chisel nib seems to work okay, which is good because I don't have any replacement chisel nibs. And uh, let's pull out this wreck nib and let's. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think I ought to? You think I ought to try um, submerging it without the tip? That would be like injecting it, right? We'll just do it for like a little minute. There. That's like an injection. And push that on. Now we should start by capping it. Actually, dabbing off the excess alcohol would be smart. All right, and capping the other end. And now I should store it with the brush nib down so that the ink can flow. What ink is in here can flow. So I'm going to do that. And I guess I'll see you guys for this in 24 hours, maybe. Actually, I will probably see you guys when um, I have the field test ready to go and we can do the field test together for these Prima markers. Woo! All right, so um, if you enjoy these kind of videos, if you enjoy these kind of reviews, first of all, please check out natosoup.blogspot.com. That's where I post the full reviews. Most of these are just partial, um, like segments kind of, right? To just kind of illustrate things or demonstrate things that I have trouble, uh, trouble doing in photos or through just words. Um, Secondly, you should consider liking this video and hitting subscribe for even more content like this. I review markers like all the time, way too often. I've got a problem. I've got an addiction. Please, someone save me. Um, so I am always checking out new stuff. I also write and or write, create and share tutorials on the blog fairly often. And I share tutorials on here. So please consider subscribing and liking this video because it would help me out and I would appreciate it. Thirdly, and this is 100% not required, I'm just bringing it up for those of you who feel like I do a good job, you enjoy the blog, you enjoy the YouTube, you want to see more, you know that this gets expensive, you want to help me out, I have a Patreon, two bucks a month, is the min bid that's the the least amount you can give um and the reason for that is because patreon takes fees credit cards take fees for every two dollars and maybe see 50 cents um and it goes up from there and there's all kinds of goodies um as a personal backer putting in two dollars will give you access to all the behind the things thing all the behind the scenes things i would share um and but i am more focused on like community goals so groups of people each putting in minor amounts of money and unlocking something together uh trying to build community i feel like that's a great way to build community spirit um one of the first things you can unlock that is community goal minded are my art snacks versus sketchbox uh reviews that includes the videos and the tutorials those take a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of money to do they take a lot of education a lot of experience to do properly um and those go up once a month 
So if I get 15 bucks total on my Patreon, that's everybody chipping in, I will release that to the public. If you are a backer and we don't hit that goal for whatever reason, I will release it to you. So you will have access and only other backers will have that. Um, at 30 bucks, you are privy to a... Oh, I'm sorry. You helped me unlock an additional marker or watercolor tutorial for that month. So that is in addition to the ones I'm already doing. I'm going to come up with one special each month that that goal is unlocked. And that's another community goal. And at $45, if everyone pitches in and we raise $45, I will do a backer exclusive request live stream live stream where I demonstrate for you guys, my wonderful fans, um, any tip techniques you want to see done, any tips. Uh, if you want to see me disembowel a marker on on air, I'll do it for you because that's what you're paying for. Or um, I will draw what you guys want to see me draw so long as it's not porn or um, I don't mind nudity as long as it's artistic nudity. So like figure drawing. Um, yeah, that's my Patreon. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you later. Bye.